Thank you. All right. Uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation to speak here. So I'm actually here instead of, of Dan Chubutaru, one of the collaborators on this work. Um, uh, he was a uh, colleague of Gordon at Utah for seven years, and uh, he wanted to pass. Uh, he wanted me to pass on a message on his behalf. So I say to you that I'm really sorry that I can't take your part. I've always had a great admiration for Gordon's work and insight. It was a privilege to be his colleague at Utah. I hope to see him again in person soon and talk more after the event. Um, uh, I personally don't know Gordon, but I want to relay maybe one anecdote on my behalf as well. Just the first sort of non-trivial example I did for my work uh, was on these minimal representations. And I think for me, it was the first time I got very excited about the beauty of, of the subject. Um, OK, so without further ado, uh, I'll be talking about the construction of some unipotent local artifacts today. So it's very closely related to um, Adams's talk on Monday. Uh, this is the Piatic analog of sort of what he was talking about. And so there'll be some overlap uh, in the introduction. So but I'll, I'll go over it nonetheless. Let me begin with an introduction. So uh, what are these local Arthur packets? Well, so in the, in the 80s, Arthur uh, introduced a series of conjectures on automorphic forms. So let me recall the local implications. Um, so let K be a local field. And uh, GK be the K points of a connected conductor group defined So what's a what's an Arthur parameter? So uh, an Arthur parameter is a map from the Vedelin group of your local field cross SL two. We're going to use just the local, uh, so the Langlands dual group, since we're working in the split case, and uh, we consider these parameters up to conjugation on the target, and we consider the parameters which are tempered. So well, the restriction is a tempered. Uh, Langlands parameter and psi restricted to the SL2 is algebraic. And well, what are we supposed to get from these parameters? We want to attach some packets, very much sort of similar to the Langlands picture. Uh, and the way it relates to the Langlands picture is we can also obtain a Langlands parameter uh, from psi, so from the Vedelin group, integer check. And it's not sort of just a restriction, but it's this diagonal like embedding. Um, okay, so the local contents of the Arthur conjectures is the following. The following. Um, Uh, so to each psi, we can attach some packet of irreducible smooth representations of of our uh, uh, of our of our group over this field K, uh, satisfying some properties. So I'll list some of them. So for instance, it must contain, so I'm going to write, oops, upper L, the Langlands packet. So upper L, the Langlands packet consists uh, corresponding to, to this parameter, should be contained in the Arthur packet. Um, two, 
the ISA packet should consist of unitary representations. Uh, so this makes it quite relevant understanding the unitary dual. Um, And it should also satisfy some properties I won't list in detail. I'll maybe just mention the relevant words, uh, stability, and endoscopy, and more. Okay. So one of the big problems in, in the representation theory of uh, Reductive groups over local fields is constructing these ISA packets. Um, so, what is I A psi attached um, for this group here? So in the case when K is R or C, this was the content of Adam's talk um, on Monday. So, so this, these packets pi A psi have been constructed. In, uh, in their book, Adams, Adash, Hogan, uh, I'll refer to this as ABV as well. And so using this microlocal geometry, that he mentioned in his talk, and this generalizes um, earlier work done in 85, just by Barbash and Vogin. Where they said that they did the complex case uh, where they construct where construct so-called unipotent. Uh, ISA packets in the complex case. And K equals C using an invariant which has come up already uh, quite a few times in this conference using the wavefront set. So, what do I mean by unipotent here? Also, the analogy to keep in mind is Lustig's classification of irreducible characters in finite groups of Lie type, and sort of the building blocks are the unipotent ones. And then in general, all of the irreducible representations can be uh, built from the unipotent ones in some sense. And the same philosophy should hold true for our for packets. Jeffrey Adams sort of hinted at that when he talked about computing ISA packets explicitly in the, the real and the complex cases on Monday. Okay, so the Archimedean case is, is more or less settled. So when K is piadic, uh, uh, there's no generally accepted definition. There is, uh, and I should emphasize generally here, uh, good definition. So, by which I mean a uniform definition. There have been several notable uh, definitions in particular cases. So, let me mention in 2005, uh, Etek Gunn and um, Dick Cross uh, constructed some non tempered ISA packets, G2. Maybe it's choice. Did I get that wrong? Sorry. I will defer to you. Is it Nadia? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's in here. Very sorry about that. Um, uh, <laughs> 52. Um, and in 2006 and 14, uh, Arthur, oops, sorry, Monglen. Constructed uh, packets for classical groups, and in 2013, 
uh, Arthur had this uh, general construction, which Jeffrey Adams mentioned, um, for any local field, and it was also for these classical, well, for particular classical groups, which he mentioned. And there's also the notable uh, work of Clifton ha Cunningham and his, his collaborators. Oops. X, where they attempt to do a general definition using sort of mimicking, mimicking microlocal approach. of ABV in the Piatic case. But as far as I'm aware, there are still some issues about um, making that work in the Piatic setting. So uh, I think in GLN, you want your Arthur packets to be singletons, but it doesn't quite work out in, uh, in their construction. OK, so the starting point for, for the work which this talk is based on uh, the starting point of this talk uh, is how do we construct how do we construct uh, the unipotent Arthur packets in the Piatic case. Um, and sort of uh, in the same breath, I guess, what are the unipotent, uh, the unipotent parameters? So, um, that's sort of, yeah, the starting point. And if you get the unipotent, hopefully you can get all of the Arthur packets this way. Okay, so, uh, well, one particular parameter, which certainly should be unipotent, is the following. Parameter psi from the lean group cross SL2 to check G, uh, where it's trivial on the Veda lean group. Certainly ought, that or certainly deserves to be called uh, unipotent. Certainly to be unipotent. And why do I say this? Well, in the complex case, these are exactly the unipotent parameters considered in Bybash and Vogel's 85 paper. So uh, and in the real case, uh, this is a, well, in, it was a Z2 that came up in Jeffrey Adams' talks when you look at the, the uh, unipotent parameters in the real case. So in the Piatic case, we still don't quite know the answer for what all the unipotent parameters are. We certainly know that this one should be one. Uh, and indeed, if you have any ideas, very happy to talk about that after the talk. Um, and so what the content of this talk is, we're going to construct. Uh, so in this talk, we will construct uniformly uh, in the split case, um, the Arthur packets attached to these, these particular parameters, which I mentioned. I call the, oh, in our paper we call this anti-tempered parameters. It will be clear at the end of this talk why we call them anti-tempered parameters. Okay, so uh, before I go into the details of the construction of the Piatic case, I want to motivate it by what was done in the complex case by Babash and Vogan in their 85 paper. So let me briefly go over the proof strategy there, or I guess the construction. Complex case. Ashen Vogan. Okay, so let G be a complex reductive group. G a complex. Um, then by Jacobs and Morozov theorem. Of theorem. Well, there's a bijection between these two sets. So, anti tempered parameters um, cross SL2 into G check 
mod g check and nil point orbits on the dual side. Um, so, okay, with trivial on the Vagelin group. So indeed, there's a bijection between the nil point orbits on the dual side. So given, given such an anti-temperature parameter, psi let uh, O be corresponding nil point orbit. And the correspondence is very simple. You just take the image of zero, zero. Um, Going back to the jet for Adam's case, uh, we don't have this Z mod two. Yeah. So if you do, uh, you know, this correspondence is just behind you. What do you get there? Okay. So if you allow Z mod two, yeah, instead of W K. Mm -hmm. So in this correspondence, what do you get? Um, mm -hmm. well, that would be exactly the one that arises in your case as well. I don't know exactly. So the parameter space is, I mean, the SL2 and the G-check is the same complex and the, the, the piano can be expressed. <coughs> this bar group which should have increased. Um, uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, given psi, let O be the corresponding nil-point orbit, and G-check, H-check, F-check, be in SL2 triple, with E check and I check. You can take the SL2 triple coming from here. Um, and so the construction strategy in, in Barbash and Vogin, the, the idea is very simple. You look at a class of characters, sorry, a class of representations, which have a particularly infinitesimal character. They're all bounded below by some bound related to O, O check. And you take all the representations with minimal possible wave function. That's the Instructions. Let me write down quickly uh, the details of that. So let uh, so we're going to write pi uh, one half h check of g be the set of representations um, of g c oh, just g rather with um, left and right infinitesimal character, one half h check. So this is the infinitesimal character, um, like I'll mention on Monday as well. And we're gonna let, uh, maybe let me start a new board. Let D. Is oh, so this is for, so this is the complex case. This is for case equals. But, but in general, you will treat the, the local to the. Yeah, so the, the content of the talk will do that. Um, so again. So let this be uh, a real mouthful, barbash, listic, Dalton scheme, Oregon duality. So I think I mean, many people uh, refer to this just as barbash bergen duality, but it was originally discovered by Stolmski um, and was apparent in Listik's early work on wild group representations. But uh, Barbash and Bergen gave a case agnostic definition. We include all of the names uh, here. So just as an example, what is this map? If we have G is GLN, then the dual group is also GLN, and both of these nil point orbits can be identified with partitions of n. And Barbash Vogan duality is then just a transpose. Uh, and the theorem, which is essential for the definition of these unipotent isopackets, is the following it states that for any representation in this this set, so any representation with this infinitesimal character, uh, the wave front set is bounded below by the Barbash, I'll just call it Barbash Vogan duality from now on, uh, bounded below by the Barbash Vogan dual of 
of the uh, object. Okay. And then the definition of the Arthur packet is very straightforward. We define the Arthur packet attached to psi to be a set of representations with this infinitesimal character such that uh, the wave front set is equal to this bound. Okay, so I write less than or equal to, I think this is an aesthetic choice. Uh, they write it this way, I think maybe in practice, I guess it's easier to choose to prove inequality, but I mean, this plus this implies equality. Okay, so that's a complex case. Let's look at the Piatic case now. We want to mimic this approach. Um, okay, so let A be a... With this definition? Sorry. Which properties can they prove with this definition? Ah, so what they show is... Um, well, they show in ABV that this is the same thing as that. And in ABV, they show all of the properties. And I think unitarity maybe is still like this, um, but it's protected on the four cases. I think they, they, they have all cases. But maybe if not in, a, in the 85 paper, definitely in the 92 book. Um, okay. Uh, so let A be a finite uh, extension. Of, of the piadic numbers and let's oops, and chin and let's just assume for the sake of this talk p is sufficiently large with respect to the root tatum of g okay, i won't give some specific bounds uh, and uh, let g be a connected reductive group uh, defined and split. Okay, since we're working with a split, let's just work over defining it over z. We're going to write check for the Langlands dual group um, for dual group over z, and uh, we're going to write check g for the complex points. Uh, uh, wave front is always uh, greater than g of o. It cannot be incomparable to it. Yes, exactly. Yes, it's always greater. Than, it's not. It's always comparable. Yes. Uh, and the same. Also, in the set, yeah, yeah. So when I write less than or equal to, I, I do mean. Actually, you want to, you, you can write it lower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe the reason why they choose to write it like this is this is a strictly weak thing. You can check if you want to prove it. They are the same thing because of these bounds. Okay, I think I'll need to. Like this board. Okay, so we want to mimic this approach. There are sub several sort of questions you have to answer if we want to transfer this approach. First one is what sort of representations do we consider? So in the, in the complex case, we consider the class of representations with a particular um, infinitesimal character. So in the piadic case, the desiderata uh, dictate that we should consider um, uh, consider uh, representations with uh, cuspidal unipotent support. These are um, these are the representations uh, called unipotent bilistic, uh, and they correspond to uh, L parameters. which are uh, trivial on the inertia subgroup of the Vague group. 
the, the Boolean group. And in particular, what Lustig showed for these particular representations is that uh, and our own bijection with this following set, which I call capital Phi, GK, and it's the set of triples, S, N, and Rho, where S is a semi-simple element of E check, semi simple. N is a element of the dual Lie algebra satisfying the relation add S equals Q, add S of N equals QN, and rho is some uh, irreducible uh, representation of the component group of the joint centralizer of S of N, such that uh, the restriction to the center of G check uh, is a multiple of the identity. I'm sorry. This last condition is just to pick out the split form in this uh, parameterization of the uh, unipotent um, representation of the cusp rule, cusp rule unipotent support. Okay. Um, so, so in our, our case, uh, S will play the role of infinitesimal character. So in particular, we're going to write pi superscript loose of S to be the set of all representations uh, of cusp rule unipotent support with this particular uh, infinitesimal character. Uh, well, I should write what correspond to this thing. Can be parameterized by, by this uh, on that end. Okay. Um, and in particular, what we're going to do is we're going to look at representations with infinitesimal character due to the one half h check. Uh, so let me describe that quickly. So our first approach at doing the piadic case is sort of doing the na naive thing and translating word for word uh, what happens. Actually, sorry, I forgot. I need to tell you what the wavefront set is. So let me quickly do that. Um, so the, these are the representations we want to consider. Let me briefly tell you about the wavefront set. So we're going to need a funct for nil point orbits. To write NO for the function from category of fields to the category of sets, uh, sending a field F to the nil point orbits. Um, yeah, these are the nil point elements in the Lie algebra. Uh, and given a field extension F1 over F2, the way the functor acts on, on a set of nil point orbits is very straightforward. We naturally have an inclusion of F1, G of F2. We have an inclusion of the nil point elements as well. And we have an inclusion of the groups. So, um, what we do is given a nil point orbit, N of F1 over F2, oh, sorry, F2 over F1, um, of O is just the orbit under this bigger group once you do the appropriate inclusion. The pedal parameter of the... Yes, yes. That's the function of nil point points, and we just need to recall the following result. Uh, is there any other chalk I can use here? Oh, thanks. 
So recall the following statement about nil point orbits. So F is algebraically closed. And the characteristic of F is uh, good. Well, let me just say great, sufficiently large relative to the right root datum. Then there is a canonical bijection, uh, which we call theta sub F from the set of nil point orbits over the field F with complex nil point orbits. So in a sense, nil point orbits of algebraically closed fields, very easy to understand. And this is due to Pomeranian. Uh, so just a quick example, of course, uh, in the GLN case, then for any field of this case, we have, uh, so G is GLN, then N or F, for F of, of the above form is isomorphic to the set of partitions of N. All right, so what's the wavefront set? So let, let uh, pi comma x be an admissible uh, B and admissible smooth representation. Ah, so yeah, smooth. Yep. Of G of K. Recall we have the following. Oh, we we have the Harris Chandra local, Harris Chandra how local character expansion. Local character expansion, which expresses the character distribution or the character of X in terms of a linear combination of nil point orbital integrals, where the nil point orbital integrals correspond to nil point orbit, k rational nil point orbits. So I'm going to be a little bit, uh, I won't go into the details. I mean, this holds locally, not globally. and you need to use an exponential function to make sure their distribution is in the same set, but the point is these coefficients. Um, and the wavefront set is, is defined in terms of these coefficients. So the wavefront set of X is defined to be, okay, depending on how you like thinking about this, but we will think about it as the maximum uh, over all the orbits with non-zero coefficient. Uh, in this local character expansion. I think, um, I forgot whose name it was, but they, I think maybe Bai Yingyu defined the wavefront set as the union over the closures, uh, but these are just the open orbits in the union over the closures. So the exact same data. Okay. And in particular, let me just emphasize, this is a subset of K rational nil point orbits. Um, it might not be a singleton in particular might be several. Um, now the problem, of course, is there's no easy way to go from nil point orbits, uh, uh, nil point orbits of the dual group to k rational nil point orbits in the original group. Um, but recall this result that I mentioned earlier, the nil point orbits of K bar, again, I'm assuming K has residue characteristics sufficiently large, uh, well, it's actually characteristic zero, so it's fine, um, is isomorphic to complex nil point orbits. And recall we have this map of Barbara Schenbergen. So we have NO check, NO. So in particular, if we combine these two, we can get a map. If we combine, we get a map here. So this leads us to consider what is known as uh, a geometric wavefront set. The geometric wavefront set is the following. It's just maximum over all the algebraic orbits over O. Uh, in X, right? So recall this is a functive, so you just take 
the, the orbit under the larger group. So you take the geometric points and you take the larger uh, orbits, and this is information that can be derived from just the usual wavefront set. So it's uh, somehow coarse information extracted from the Piatic wavefront set, which is why we call it the algebraic one. So sorry. Um, now, if we use the geometric wavefront set, one of the theorems that we prove is exactly the same bound in joint work. Uh, Shibutaru, Mason, oops, Mason Brown, myself. Um, we prove for representations with infinitesimal character q to the one half h check. So the difference from the complex cases we now have this q in, involved. Uh, uh, and we have this technical condition, Iwahori spherical. But um, this is not a very serious restriction. So for say f4 and the subregular orbit, there are 20 elements of this packet and 19 of them are Iwahori spherical. Uh, and um, it's, we also expect the proof that we have for this follows through exactly for the whole packet. We just wanted to get the paper out quickly. So we did the Iwahori spherical one. Um, uh, we have the exactly the same bound. So barbash vogan dual of O check modified in this manner is less than or equal to A bar. So it's tempting to just rehash the exact same thing that Barbash and Vogan did. Uh, Let me just actually, I forgot to define one thing. Uh, I also want to define the following thing. So recall that the algebraic wavefront set is a subset of k bar rational nil point orbits. And I've just said you can identify that with complex nil point orbits. So let's write uh, semicolon C for just the algebraic wavefront set viewed as a subset of the complex nil point orbit center group. Yeah. So for the spherical representation there and this part of this thing with the. Is it all for all the same? Well, you know, you have this L packet which should sit, should sit in A packet and it should be just a spherical representation. Yeah. So do we have equality for that one? Yes. So that's uh, the content of my first proof, actually. Did you have equality? Ah. Yeah, um. Okay, so it's tempting to define, define uh, the arc of packet attached to psi, okay, to be the set of representations in this finite set, with this particular infinitesimal character, which uh, are bounded by. Let's work on the C side. So simplicity. Okay. This would exactly make well, sense. Depending on how you look at it, exactly mirror the approach of Barash and Bogan. But there's an issue with this approach, and that's that if you sit down and try to check the Bhutagata, this is a set that's too big, it's not an active packet. Um, so we conjecture uh, this is a union. And of course, an uh, interesting question to answer is which archipelago is lying in this? And so we call this the weak archipelago. Um, 
Not not necessarily disjoint now. We do an example of that for um, the treatment, and in that case, it's not a disjoint union. Um, yeah, we expect this is something that can be answered using, I guess, the machinery of Jacobe and Ingres uh, in the in the classical cases where it applies. But figuring out what parameters uh, arise is something that we think should be doable in particular cases. We don't know what the answer is in general. We have a more precise version of this conjecture in the preprint of what the infinitesimal character should be. Um, but maybe this is a too much to go into into this talk. Um, okay, so this is not an A packet. Um, so uh, we need to extract. Minor information from um, in a sense in this construction we've only made use of the algebraic orbits coming from the wavefront set. But maybe there's a chance of constructing Arthur packets if we extract even finer information. That's exactly what we'll do. Let NOC denote the set of all pairs O comma C such that O is a complex nilpotent orbit and C is a conjugacy class of the component group um, of the centralizer of an element in O. This is a very familiar set, maybe to some people, or at least it looks familiar. So the Springer correspondence rather than conjugacy classes, you'd have reducible representation. That certainly suggests some tantalizing connections there, which we do look at in the paper. Uh, but also this arises in its own right in classifications of nilpotent orbits of finite groups of new types. So in that case, it is a conjugacy class of the component group of, of, of this orbit. So this arises as a non canonical parameter set uh, in the finite groups of new types case. Um, but what we're interested in, so in my uh, preprint of last year in July, I proved that there's a bijection that I defined and proved a bijection between the set. Oh, okay, let me uh, introduce that capital K be the maximal unramified section. K in K bar. This is going to all the roots of the uh, So in, in this treatment, I define the bijection between nil point orbits over this intermediate field and this set K. That's a canonical bijection. So in, in contrast to what happens in the finite groups of the type case where we need to choose a base point. Um, okay, and this bijection came about in order to understand uh, this invariant, which I will not give a name to because it will just briefly feature uh, the following set, which is refined information extracted from the wavefront set, and it's the maximum over. So, I mean, we have the following picture. Our periodic field sits inside the unramified, maximum unramified extension sits inside K bar. So certainly nil point orbits over this intermediate field will certainly give us finer information than what happens over K bar. Map? Sorry? Can you say a bit more about the map? Um, How do you go from the left to the right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me do it while I'm erasing. Where am I? Um, so, so the map, so if you, so in 2002, the background of this paper, 
uh, classifying the open body as a digital twin, and is based on ideas of Arthur J. and the Walter J. first conducted this only in the two different cases. And then by about morning 1992, case three, to prove it for all cases, the classification of the open body is over here, and the back very extends it very nicely. A uh, sort of similar classification scheme works for this field here, national analysis, and, and the, I think all of the proofs somehow pass through here at some point. So you can extend that. Uh, but what's very nice about the residue field of capital K is it's, it, I mean, if the residue field of little k is F2, then the residue field of F, capital K is F2 bar. And that's sort of the feature of what we need from this. And it's parameterized in terms of reductive quotients of the parahoric. And the parahorics, uh, well, the reductive quotients of parahorics are finite groups of the type that F2 bar is algebraic to close to the classification theorem and also the products of F2 bar. It's all what you can do over the complex number. That gives you a combinatorial description of, of the null point models as it is set here. So it's very difficult for people to do in practice. So then there's this obviously parameterization of other than magnage, which parameterizes this set in terms of pseudo levies and cosets and things like this. And I guess the key ingredient is connecting the residues somehow. So it's a little bit technical to describe how they exactly fit together, but there's some canonical identification which is coming up in the next few steps, which goes through, uh, I guess, these three different parameters. You can look at the first case I put out in line three. Okay, so, so this is certainly a natural. Uh, also, this came about because I was originally reading Barbash and Moy's paper from 92 on local character expansions, and they described this method of computing the wavefront set, which sort of hadn't really been picked up since. I guess maybe it wasn't entirely clear. They didn't make a precise statement on how to do it, so I was trying to figure out how to do it. And uh, uh, like, uh, so this connects to what uh, Anne-Marie was talking about on Monday. These wavefront sets of finite groups of lead type can be described in terms of um, geometric data, linguistics classification, as well when you want to lift it up to the periodic group, you naturally get information over capital K. So that's also why this field shows up. Okay, so now well, the problem with this particular invariant, although it's finer than the geometric one, is it's very difficult to understand. I mean, the wavefront set over little k is difficult enough, but uh, here it's still difficult. Uh, this was like my first attempt at trying to understand it. You need to understand this set first of all. The partial order is kind of hard to, to compute in practice, although I'm sort of working on that at the moment. But there's, a, there's an even better invariant we can consider. Um, and this is, well, it comes from the fact that Achar has studied this set extensively. So there exists um, equivalence relation, which I denote by tilde A on NOC, um, and it's very nice uh, due to a car, a char, and his 2003 paper. Um, uh, and he defines uh, a, pre, uh, a partial order, a little a, on this set of equivalence classes. Okay, and what's very nice about the equivalence classes and the partial order is it's entirely computed in terms of the complex group. So it's very easy to understand in practice. Um, indeed, he's got a lot of tables which classify them. So you can transfer all of this data onto the left-hand side of this bijection. And well, another result that he shows is this set here has a particularly nice description as well. We let um, no C bar, be the set of O comma C bar, where O is again a nil point orbit to the C. And C is now a conjugacy class of listics canonical quotient of O. So it's almost the same set as before, but we replace the component group with this quotient of the component group. So this is listics canonical quotient. Uh, and I don't know, maybe. You've only seen this in the context of adjoint groups with special orbits, but Summers in his 2001 paper extends this definition to any nil point orbit for any isogeny class. Um, okay, so this is a set that makes sense. 
uh, and then the chart proves in the same paper uh, there's a bijection between this set and an IC bar. So in particular, just abstract nonsense, once you transfer all of this structure from NOC over to NOC bar, get, we get the following. Well, we get a parameterization of the HR equivalence classes of unramified null point orbits with NOC bar. And we also get a new partial order on this set. And conjecturally, this is compatible with the closure ordering that you get usually. Um, and then, so what, so this is really the information we use for our proof. We're gonna let, so the, the canonical class, oops, of WF, of X, this is also known as the canonical and ramified wavefront set in, in the papers, but I thought maybe in this talk I will try a new name for what it is. Uh, the canonical class, WF is equal to, we, we write it like this, and it's the maximum over the set of equivalence classes of unramified orbits arising in the wavefront set. Okay, so maybe I'm cheating a little bit here. The actual definition is a little bit more technical, but for expository purposes, I will, I will say it is this. And so it's sort of clear that uh, this is this is information which is a little bit finer than the algebraic wavefront set, uh, but uh, well, but it's easier to compute than the, the invariant I described there. Sorry, I'm running a little bit over, but I'm almost done. So this is this is a priori is that? Oh, okay. So this is sorry. I know. I know. This is a very good question. A priori is a subset, uh, and let me write. W, F, uh, C, so let's call this bijection equals by, uh, or we just view it as a subset of, of N O C bar. A priori, it's a subset, but in all the cases we've computed, it's a single set. Okay. It has the benefit that, like the algebraic wave from set, it's probably always a single thing. Um, and it still captures finer information. And well, it's compatible with the geometric wavefront set that in the case that when it is a singleton, when it is a singleton, uh, it takes the following form. So it is reminiscent of the associated cycle in the real case. Uh, it's not precise by any means. In the real case, you attach a vector bundle, I think, on the, onto, the, onto the wavefront set. Here, rather than a representation of the component group, we have the conjugacy class of the canonical quotient. So it's not precise, but perhaps uh, that's the way to think about it. It's sort of the piadic analog of that. Um, and in addition to the structure here, we also get from a chart papers from uh, the paper by Achar, we also get finer duality maps. So this, these maps extend in Barbash, Lustig, Schwaldenstein, Bogen duality. In a very sort of non-trivial way, you get non-special orbits this way, so I guess from Barbash and Bogen duality, you only get special orbits, as is uh, in the image, but in, in a char duality, you can get any kind of orbit um, in the first component. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to state the statement and then I'm done. Um, okay, and the statement is very simple. So we prove an anal uh, analogous result to. Uh, Barbash uh, Vogin, so let X be inside of, uh, well, let's say it has infinitesimal character Q to the one half H check. Then, uh, also you are Hori spherical. Then, um, 
the, the canonical class is bounded below by this, this refined route, and that's, again, more information. Then if you define the Arthur packet attached to psi to be uh, the set of representations which have canonical class equal, then this satisfies the Uh, the first two disarata, so first of all, the first disarata that I listed is satisfied, that's the content of the first paper. Uh, in particular, we also get the following thing. This packet is parametrized by the reducible representations of the component group of O. Um, that's very nice. We get that they're all unitary. You can prove that they're all unitary, and you can prove that they're all anti-tempered, so the AZ dual of tempered representations is there. All of, the AZ dual of all of the tempered representations in here. Okay, so, I mean, technically speaking, we've only shown it for your Hoy spherical, so I need to put a circle here. But like I said, we expect all the results to hold in general. Um, yeah, so thank you.